Okay, so <laughs> I was going through all of the books that I read and listened to in 2021 and I was kind of putting together a list of books to recommend to you guys to check out in 2022 that were like the most life-changing and influential and just incredible books that I read in 2021. And I realized I wanna talk about one of them. Um, I find that a lot of times when I'm either reading or listening to audiobooks, some books are more easily broken down so I can put it into a YouTube video than others. And I thought that this one was absolutely perfect because it's so, it's so good. It's one of those like, I think I listened, I listened to it on a Audible and it was one of those things where I had to like keep pausing it, just like digest, like what? this author was saying and the book is the four agreements if you're in this spiritual community or you're on this um higher consciousness kind of journey you've probably heard of it maybe possibly read it if you haven't i'm going to give you the four main points of the four agreements and um then i highly suggest checking it out if you haven't read it already but uh it's it's a doozy it's a doozy <laughs> If you're new here, I'm Sarah and I help teach people how to find inner happiness through fitness and spirituality. And today we're going to learn about the four agreements and how to improve your life with them. first agreement is be impeccable with your word it's so funny because you know we're taught that like little joke saying thing when we're little you know sticks and stones may break my bones but words can never hurt me and so i feel like we're taught that when we go through life that words don't have as much power but like words are the most powerful thing thoughts are the most powerful thing and even in this book the author uses it and says words such as black magic and white magic and putting curses and spells on people because that's what we do with words and it's what we do to other people and it's what we do with ourselves and the way he puts it is that our words are tools of magic and we decide with the way that we're speaking and the way that we're thinking if that's going to be good magic or bad magic are we using our words and our thoughts to improve our lives and others? Or are we using them to tear ourselves down and tear other people down? Because everything comes from a manifestation of our words, our actions, and our thoughts. And in using these words and thoughts and dreams and all the things that go in our little noggin, you can create the most beautiful dream around you. Or you can create a living hell. And it's totally up to you. So that's the cool part. So the next agreement is not taking things personally. This one was pretty freaking interesting because if you think about it, especially with social media, especially with everything going on in the world right now, there is so much like argumentative spaces, argumentative people, people that are just going at each other and at the end of the day, what he's saying in this book is that what other people say literally has nothing to do with you. And on the flip side, what you say to other people isn't going to change them. So like, what's the point? And the thing is, if you, I, I, this is the part that really grasped me. If someone says something to you, and you take it personally. It means that you have made an agreement that those words or feelings or thoughts that the other person said or that you're saying to yourself are true. So think about it this way. Think about if, um, if you were the uh, valedictorian, okay? And someone comes up to you and they say, you're really stupid. You know, you really don't know anything. Well, you obviously know that you're an intelligent human being or else you wouldn't be valedictorian. So those words like don't even affect you because you don't make an agreement that they're true because you don't believe that they're true. However, maybe you're the valedictorian, but you've always felt like you wanted to lose 10 pounds or 
20 pounds or whatever. And the, you know, the same person comes up to you and they say, hey, you know, you're looking a little chubby in that dress. And you go home and you're upset and you're thinking about it and it's just running over and over and over in your mind and you're upset about it. And because you took it personally, because you believed it and you made an agreement for that statement to be true. So the only time you're taking things personally and other people's words are affecting you is if you are taking them personally and you're making an agreement that something about that statement is true. So that really knocked my freaking socks off because I'm like, whoa, because like, you know, we can get so triggered, right? Like we can get so triggered when people say things. And at the end of the day, when someone says something to you, it has nothing to do with you. It only has to do with their perception of life and their perception of whatever has gone on in their life, maybe even what mood they're in, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. And I think the more that all of us can grasp that, that concept, the more like peaceful and loving this world will be. And I really liked this analogy that he used about our, our brains being a fertile ground. Are you a fertile ground for positive seeds or are you a fertile ground for negative seeds? Are you a fertile ground? Is your thoughts, are your, is your brain a fertile ground for positive thoughts or negative thoughts? Because then if you go back to number one, whatever you're receiving, taking personally, thinking, feeling, saying, is going to come into fruition. So if you're only allowing positive things, positive thoughts, positive words overcome you, you're allowing the positive seeds to plant and grow in your brain and your thoughts and your consciousness, which transcends into your outer life. Okay, number three, we've heard this a million times, but it's just like <laughs> obvious. Don't make assumptions. You've heard that saying, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> I don't know where the song came from, just we're just, <laughs> we're gonna go with it, okay? <laughs> but seriously, there's literally no reason to make an assumption about anything. You just ask questions. If you don't know how someone's thinking or feeling, you just ask them. Like it seems so obvious, but like how much do we all do that? Like someone's, you know, um, for example, I have a really good friend of mine and I texted her last week, I think last week, and she sent me a response. Didn't say anything negative, didn't say anything, but I took it as a negative response and I was like, oh geez, sorry, like don't know what I did to offend you. And then I caught myself and I'm like, wait a second. All right, so. My roommate is on a work call and he's really freaking loud. <laughs> and it's like our house is so open that it just sound just travels. So I thought we come outside uh, cause it's actually kind of nice. It's not nice out, it's cold, but it's supposed to snow a little later, but it's not too bad. I figured we could finish up out here. Okay, anyway, so we're talking about not making assumptions. I think the biggest point of this that really grasped me is people can't read your mind. Like, I think that so many of us expect our friends, our significant others, our spouses, our kids, our moms, our dads, or whoever to read our minds. And it's like, logically, that doesn't even make sense. You know what I mean? So like, it says, you know, don't make assumptions, but like, just communicate better. Like, that's the way I interpret that. Like, just communicate better. If you have a question, ask. Don't be passive aggressive. Being passive aggressive is such a waste of time and energy. Assuming things about people is such a waste of time and energy. Just be direct. And like, don't be scared of the way people are gonna take that. Cause like, people appreciate directness. Like, look, I'm in sales and I've always been very direct and to the point and like, hey, I can either help you or I can't and like that's the bottom line and that's why I do well in my career. It's because people are like, oh, I appreciate you not being all salesy and uh, saying all this like sales jargon and try to like push me and corner me. It's like, just be direct. Like, hey, this is what I can do for you. Does it work for you? That's literally it. And that's how you should be with every interaction that you have, no matter who it's with. Stop assuming shit about people. 
and if they assume things about you again referring back to number two it has nothing to do with you it's not your problem it's literally not your problem <laughs> <laughs> for example, if someone says, you know, hey, you know, they invite me out for plans and maybe I don't feel like going out that night because I've, I'm a little hermit. <laughs> um, I used to feel really, really, really guilty about that. And now it's kind of like, well, if you have a problem with like me not showing up or whatever the case may be, like, that's on you. Like, that's not my shit. Like, that's your shit. Like, I don't, that's your problem. Like, if you want to be upset or annoyed or angry or whatever with me, Okay, enjoy that feeling of negativity because I ain't having it. I'm gonna be curled up with my little cat by a fire watching a movie and I'm not upset. So you should not be upset. Okay, anyway, let's talk about the fourth and final agreement. And that is, always do your best. And your best is what he says is different every day. And I think like, I think that that's such a big point because we put so much pressure on ourselves and it's like there are just days that your best is going to be like a number one and then there are days where your best is going to be like a number 10. I get stuck in this cycle of well I should be doing more, I should be doing this, blah 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 and recently I've taken on the whole mentality of like I'm not going to do anything that I think I should be doing. I'm gonna be doing things because I want to do them. That should be something that you consider when you're thinking that, you know, you're not doing enough. If what, ah! my camera's gonna fall. <laughs> what was almost scary. Ow, I cut myself though. Mm. And one of the things that he also mentions in this, um, this section of the book is not to only work for a payday. And I think that's what a lot of people are talking about when they're like, you know, if you follow your passion or you do something, you're, you do what you're passionate about in life, you'll never work a day in your life. Because what he says is that if you're taking action aside from some kind of reward, whether it's money or something else, you're just gonna be happier. They did a whole, they did like experiments, I think, I was reading the other day they did an experiment on it was like young children I think they were like the ages like four to seven or something like that and they loved to draw and then all of a sudden they like experimented with these kids like well what if they get graded on these drawings what if they do this and what if they have to do it X amount of time a day and it literally killed their love for for painting and drawing and art so it's like you have to find this balance of doing something that you love, but also not drowning yourself in it to where it takes away your passion for it. But I think the bottom line is the way he closes out the book, which is like, if you follow my channel a lot and you see a lot of my videos, this is something I truly believe in. And that is like, happiness is freedom and love. Happiness is freedom, comment below. Happiness is freedom and love. It's it's playing like you were when you were children. It's exploring different careers and, and parts of the world and things to do and activities and it's having fun. And like that's the whole point of this book because our victim mentality, judging ourselves and others and our belief system is what keeps us from being who we truly are. Like I don't even know if most of us even know who we truly are because we're so scrutinized and we're so stuck in this box because of we play our own victim. We judge ourselves. We have these belief systems that like we may not even know about. And instead of doing the things we enjoy or maybe we don't even know what we enjoy anymore because we've been so pushed and pummeled into this box over through over like life conditioning that we don't even know. So get out there, enjoy your life, be happy. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Just go play around. Go like. If I wasn't get if I wasn't gonna get sued or something or have the cops calling me, I'd go play on their. You see it? Their little playground down there. <laughs> I always want to. I seriously. Sometimes if I am driving and I see a really like fun looking playground, I'll freaking stop. I'll freaking stop. I'll play on the playground. Okay. Don't lose your childlike nature. Because. We're right here to be fun. I love you guys so much. Really highly suggest you check out this book. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe so we can hang out again next week. And I love you so much. And don't forget, be limitlessly yourself. <laughs>